What is up, everybody? We are back with one of my favorite events of the year, the NBA Draft. My name is Bert. Welcome to Speak Truth Sports, and we're going to be doing a quick little mock draft for you guys today. I say quick, but I'm probably going to ramble on a little bit. It's probably going to be a little bit long, so kick back, relax, enjoy yourself. Um, I'm going to try and uh, get through these pretty quickly, but uh, this might be coming out at a weird time, and that's because um, trades are happening right now, and I just want to put this out before any other trades come up and mess up the whole draft board for me um and i want to preface this by saying that this is just straight up one of the most unpredictable drafts i've ever um tried to uh mock uh it's be i say that because the the tiers of talent are so big uh as in you know tier there's a tier a and there's a tier b and a tier c like the tier c is like 30 players like the, the talent level is close enough between a lot of these players that they could literally go anywhere and not be surprised. Um, but I think the lottery players are pretty locked in, kind of. There's like there's a couple contentious um, picks I'll have, I'm sure. Um, and I'll explain myself a little bit, especially on the more contentious picks. But for now, let's get into it. Uh, we are on Fanspo, which is an amazing site. I highly recommend Fanspo. We love Fanspo here. Um, and we're going to be using their mock draft similar to show you my mock draft. So number one at the with the Atlanta Hawks, I have them selecting Zachary Rissache. Um, this has kind of just been a long time coming. They haven't really been doing workouts with Alex Sar. Alex Sar doesn't really want to go there, I don't think. And so now he is going to be taken by the Hawks. I think Klingon's also a very real option here, and I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but what I will say is I, I think this is so far the consensus among people who have inside information is that Risa Shea is going first. Um, check out the mock we did yesterday if you want to see. Um, there was It would be two days ago by the time this comes out. If you want to see what would happen if Klingon went first, I did that mock with uh, a friend of the channel, Wes. So you guys can check that one out if you want to see what happens if Klingon goes first, uh, for example. I think I'll put Risa Shea first here for mine. Number two for the Wizards. Come on, we're taking Alex Saar. Is there anybody else we could take here, really? I mean, if he's on the board, I think Saar has the highest ceiling in this draft. I think ideally what you would want from him is to just become a Walmart AD. Right, That's the ceiling you want him to hit. He's a little raw offensively right now. Um, besides just rim running, there's not like a solid, uh, he doesn't have like a really solid skill set, but he's shown enough flashes here and there. There's flashes of the shooting. There's flashes of the of the passing. There's a lot to be excited about with Alex Sar. He's going to a team where he can sit back and develop, and I love that. And just the way he moves and how fluid he is as an athlete. Amazing. Incredible. I love this selection for the Wizards. Exactly what they need to continue their rebuild here. And it's rare you get a seven footer that moves the way and dribbles and handles the way he does. So that's a, uh, it sucks for Hawks fans that they're not going to get him most likely. Um, but it's great for Wizards fans. Um, okay. Number three, the Rockets. This is kind of one of the swing points of the draft, I think, because there's a chance this pick could be traded. I, um, I think, but I really think there's, if this pick is traded, there, there's a couple more options opened up. But for the Rockets, I think they have two main options. I think they either go Reed Shepard or Donovan Klingon. I think for the sake of... I think for the sake of being, one, a little bit different, and two, exploring a different opportunity where maybe they trade this pick, I'm going to take Donovan Klingon here. I'm not going to actually put out a full trade. But I'm just gonna I'm gonna allude to that this pick would probably even be made if they traded down. Uh, as in terms of who would trade up, it could be the Thunder, it could be the Grizzlies, it could be one of those teams, right? So I'm gonna put Klingon here at three, two, and Klingon's an amazing defensive center, like at least a paint paint protector. Um, there are questions about how he might hold up in the playoffs, but I really really. I really think that if you just want a guy to just come in and solidify your defense, solidify the paint for you, this is the guy you get. And I think the Grizzlies could use this guy. And you know what? Even if 
the Rockets don't end up trading this pick and they take Donovan Quingen, I still think he could fit. I still think he'd be decent uh, on this team. He wouldn't be starting. Realistically, the Rockets aren't drafting a starter here. They have a they have so much talent to play. They really kind of can't draft a starter. Even Reed Shepard, I don't think, would start for him, right? So anyone they draft is going to be coming off the bench unless they trade him. And if they do trade, I think Klingon is going here. All right. The Spurs with the fourth pick. There's a couple different options they could go here, but I'm going to go with one of my guys, Reed Shepard. I think Reed Shepard fits amazingly with Victor Wembanyama. I think this is a perfect fit. Um, Reed Shepard is just an elite shooter. He's a really, really pesky defender. He's really good at blocking three-point shots for some reason. And I watched almost every game in Kentucky, um, or every game that Kentucky played, and Reed Shepard stood out every single time. Every single time, the starters would come out, and then the real game would get started when Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard checked in. And Reed is great playing on or off ball. What's also great about that is that you want the ball in your best player's hands, right? So hear me out. Who's the best player on the Spurs? Wemby. Okay. So when Wemby's handling the ball, you want a guard that can do stuff off the ball to help him out. Reed Shepard is amazing off the ball. Run him off a few screens. This man shot 50% from three in their college season. Let him, let him cook. I think he fits great here. I think the Spurs would be really, really lucky to have him, uh, have him fall here. Fall. It's one spot. <laughs> I think this person would be good. They'd be elated to have him. Okay. Number five is kind of the pick that's just like, everyone's picking Matas Buzelis. Everything's pointing to Matas Buzelis. There's like, there's, there's like things within the, um, there's, there's like things going on in the background. It's like, oh, his agent is involved in this and this. And it's like, everything just feels geared up to just the Pistons taking Matas Buzelis. So I'm just going to go with it here. Um, if it wasn't for Matas, who would I pick? I might go down to Dalton Connect. I might take a look at Cody Williams. This this is also like a good trade back candidate. T. John Salon, uh, I think, is also a good trade back candidate or a good draft candidate here if they don't take Buzelis. But literally, I don't think any. I don't, I don't know how many workouts they've done. I think I think this is the highest level prospect they've worked out it, correct me if i'm wrong i might be wrong on that everything just points to them taking matas Buzelas. i know pistons fans might be um tired of hearing this pick i know i get it trust me um but i just think that's that that it's what's going to happen and if they don't take him hey more power to him like let's see where they go the, the pistons have just ignored fit for too long and they need they need shooters and matas has a chance to become a shooter and he's six eight uh without shoes i believe so i think it's a good swing to take why not hornets at six i'm gonna have them taking dalton connect here dalton connect just fits in like a glove on this team you throw him right in with lamello and uh and brandon miller i think the offense will be great could they take stefan castle here yeah they very well could uh however stefan castle has been really trying to push that he doesn't want to go to a team with a point guard even though he'd be a great fit on this Hornets team because they kind of need someone just like Stefan Castle, I feel like there's like stuff going on in the background that's gonna not that's gonna make the Hornets not draft Stefan Castle. And I think if you don't take Stefan Castle, I think a good option here is they have a couple good options. They could go Cody Williams, they could go uh Ron Holland, but that's a little high for me, but they could they could go Ron Holland. They could go Salon, but I think I think a good um a good pick for them would be connect just commit to the offense go for it you <laughs> got the defense later i guess um so yeah uh seven the blazers i'm gonna have the blazers take t john salon and he's one of the biggest draft risers he's really got a um he's got a high ceiling he's got he's got a he's got a ceiling to where if he just if he for sure solidifies that three-point shooting i mean there's like there's I think he will be a good shooter in the league, me personally. There is there are like videos of him in playoff in the playoffs hitting like logo threes. Like anyone who has the confidence to take and make those shots, I think, I think will be a good shooter in the league. Um 
I think T. John Salon will be really good. There's a chance he goes higher than this. I, at the very beginning of the process, not, not the very beginning, but earlier in the process, I was considering putting T. John Salon at four to the Spurs. And then had just with the Spurs just saying, okay, let the best guard who falls to us fall to us at eight, and we'll take him too. And I do still think that's a possibility. I think four is the, the highest he could go, though. Um, there's a chance he could go at three against the Rockets, but I I think four is kind of his ceiling. And then as for his floor, maybe like 12 to OKC. I don't, I don't see him slipping past OKC. He's got a really wide range. I really like him here with the Blazers. He'll be given time to actually um, to develop and to uh, to uh, develop his game. And he's young. Like, like I, I, I believe in Salon. I have a, I have a sneaky feeling on him. And I think he's going to be good. I know this has been mocked to the Blazers a lot as well, but it's just a good fit. I think it's a good fit. And at least it's not a guard. Okay, you all have enough cards. Okay. At eight, there's a player here that the Spurs would have considered at four and ended up sliding all the way down to eight. Let's go Stefan Castle. Stefan Castle is really good defensively. I think this new backcourt that I just created in this mock draft of Reed Shepard and Stefan Castle is elite. I think both of these players very easily play off of each other. Stefan Castle will take on the, the bigger, uh, tougher defensive assignments. Reed Shepard is more the scorer for him. So Stefan Castle, he's just he's he's a really solid defender. He's a good playmaker. He just he just does winning things. You know, he cuts well, he he uh, he just like he he I I think what wasn't harped on enough is how much he sacrificed at UConn. He sacrificed his role a lot at UConn in order for them to win the ring. Uh, and he was just doing all the little things he could on both offense and defense. And he's just kind of a winning player to me. I think I think he has a really good chance to develop into a, a good player. I don't think he'd be mad if Reed Shepard was drafted with him because Reed Shepard can very easily play off the ball. I, I don't think he Stefan Castle would be like mad that there's another point guard in the roster if the point guard is Reed Shepard. Because I think Reed Shepard plays really well off ball. And I think he'd be a great fit with Stefan Castle. It wouldn't feel like Reed Shepard's dominating the ball and Stefan Castle won't get to, to dribble the ball at all. I think he will be able to. So I think it's a really good fit for the Spurs. I think they solidify their backcourt right there. And that trio of Reed, Castle, Vassell is a crazy defensive duo or trio. And they have Wemby. Like that's that's just nuts to me. I think that's a really, really good uh, foundation for the Spurs. They just got to get a couple wings and they're good from there on, you know. Okay. Grizzlies at nine. I'm going to have the Grizzlies taking one of the, another late riser, Devin Carter. Devin Carter is very... He's a, he's very much in a Derek White uh, esque mold, and his his range is also all over the place. But apparently, he's been killing workouts. He's been doing really really well. He's a hard worker. I like him to the Grizzlies here. He feels kind of like a Grizzly pick. Um, there's a couple other options that could go. They could go Cody Williams and stuff like that. But I think Devin Carter uh, is a good selection for them, uh, and just allows them to shore up some more guard depth. Okay. Number 10 is the Jazz. I'm going to have the Jazz take Cody Williams. I know Topich is on the board. I know Dillingham's on the board. But I think Cody Williams is maybe... I think the Jazz like Cody Williams a little bit more. He just has so much potential. He's 6'6". He's got a big wingspan. He's the brother of Jalen Williams. I think he has a high ceiling he's just got to get to it <laughs> that's the that's the thing um i think the shooting he's not as good of a shooter as maybe advertised he he shot decently well on low volume so yeah we don't really know how that's going to translate but look like at the end of the day if you're the jazz you might as well take big swings this is a big swing i could also see topo here as well um that wouldn't surprise me either uh, but i th i think the pick here would be between topich and cody williams I think that's where they would go. Meanwhile, the Bulls, um, the Bulls kind of just, I don't, I can't ever get a read on who they want to draft. They, I, it feels like they, they draft really randomly. Um, they've been trying to win these past few years and they have not taken players that are win now players at all. Um, or who would they, I mean, they took, I guess, Io DeSumo like a few years ago. That was, that was decent. Um, but like Dale and Terry, interesting. Um, 
Julian Phillips, interesting. Sonogo, interesting. It's it's like, I don't really know what they're going for here. So for the Bulls, I'm going to go with one of the guys with the higher upside here that isn't Topic because they did just trade for Giddy and Giddy and Topic together. They're like, they're like almost the same player, all right? Like, why are you? You wouldn't have the both of them together. Um, I'm going to go on Holland here. Uh, and I think this is this could be a cool, exciting pick for the Bulls. I mean, he's not going to help them right away. Uh, but it's not like the Bulls are good enough right away anyways. So it's like they're kind of stuck in this middle ground. It's kind of hard to draft for them. I decided to just give them the benefit of the doubt, go upside heavy, uh, let them have Ron Holland. Maybe if they blow, if they blow it up in a couple of years, Ron Holland will be the guy they build around. Uh, but we'll see. Um, there's a lot of questions about Ron Holland's game, but – he, undoubtedly he has a high ceiling uh, he was before the season he was projected uh top three so take that for what you will okay number 12 okay see uh, see like i want to draft uh i want to draft either bob carrington here or tristan da silva and i think i settled on da silva um not because bob carrington would not help them but because they just they don't have a lot of they don't have a lot of big wings on the Thunder, you know, they could use a guy like the Silva to come right in. I wish I didn't click continue so fast. We actually look at the roster, but it's like they kind of need they kind of need a, a a three four that can come in and play some minutes for them. Gordon Hayward didn't work out. They're just a small team, and giving them Bub while Bub is I love Bub Carrington. I don't think I just I don't think it would um. It would help them very much right now and they're kind of a team that's looking to take that next step into contention i just think the silver would come in he's an older player coming right away helping out um so i think they'd go that direction okay the kings i'm this is going to be a strange pick because i'm i'm expecting the kings to trade this pick and i'm expecting them to trade it to the Wizards for Kyle Kuzma. Um, but I think I think this is where I'm gonna take Bob Carrington. And I'm a huge Bob Carrington fan. Um, I think there's a chance that he slips to 15 as well. So the reason I'm taking Bob Carrington here is because I don't believe the Kings are gonna keep this pick. However, if they do keep this pick, I still think this is solid. They could the Kings could go in a number of different directions. I can easily see them taking Tyler Smith or Derwan Holmes, somebody like that. Um, or maybe even Take a shot in the center um, and put, him, put some bonus back at power forward, but I don't think they'd do that. I could see them going a number of different, of different directions. I think if De Silva's here as well, De Silva could be a, a name to watch here. But uh, at the end of the day, listen, if something happens and Fox is unhappy and he wants to leave, at least you have a guy like Bob Carrington to give you some hope for the future. Uh, and also, I, I think Bob Carrington has one of the higher ceilings in this class as well. Uh, I think he's kind of been, he's been a slow riser, a slow burn, but people are starting to catch on. Bob Carrington's really, really good. And I'm expecting this pick to be traded. And if it is traded, I expect whoever's trading up to want to get either Topic or Carrington. So I picked, I put Carrington here. Um, and Topic's fall, and we'll talk about Topic's fall in a little bit when we get there. Um, but uh, a lot of it is knee related, but some of it kind of isn't. And we'll talk about that later, but uh, when we get to Hope it's actually being picked. Uh, but yeah, we'll have Bub Carrington over 13 overall here. All right, at 14 is the Blazers, and I think they're going to want to go for a big man here. That's just, that's my uh, inclination. So, you know, look at the big men that are available here. Uh, I think they, they could, I think they're, they would choose between Edie and Khalil Ware. And I think for the purposes of this mock draft, even though there's a very good chance they pick Edie, and they probably will pick Edie, I'm going to go Khalil Ware because I think he has, um, I think he fits more of what the the Blazers should want as opposed to will want. Um, I think he's a better rim protector than Edie. So I'm going to pick Khalil, Khalil Ware here. Uh, and so the Blazers draft is what, um, is Salon at seven and then Ware at 14. I think it's a pretty good draft. Or even if it's Edie, I don't think Edie's a bad pick here either. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a good draft. 15 for the Heat. I had this in the spoiler. I had this in the previous mock draft, but I'm going to go for it again. 
and I'm going to give them Jared McCain. Now, I think they, I think if it gets to this position for the Heat, they're going to be picking between all four of these guys. But hear me out. The Heat love hard workers. And Jared McCain is known. He is known for being one of the hardest working guys uh, around. And I really like Jared McCain's fit personality-wise with the Heat. I think he would fit in great. Not only that, he can shoot the ball and he can play some defense. I just I think Jared McCain's underrated. I think he is. I think he's going to be a really good player. I think people are underrating Jeremy King. I like him a lot. I almost considered having him 13 um, to the Kings or whoever they would trade to because I believe in Jeremy King that much. I love Jeremy King. And I don't think it's talked about enough that how, how he was, in my opinion, Duke's best uh, player last year. So I'm taking Jeremy King here for the, for the Heat. They could very, I could easily also see them going Collier or Topic or Dillingham if they're available, or Bub Carrington as well. If he's a bit, if Bub Carrington's here is also a very good chance they would go Bub Carrington. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm but I'm gonna go with this. I think I think this is a I think this fits. Um, but like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if 13 was McCain and 15 was Bub. I'm gonna put that out there as well. Sixers at 16. So at this point in the draft. Um, I'm expecting the Sixers to sell this pick. But if they don't, I feel like they would take Rob Dillingham here. And I think they would hope he kind of ends up being like a really nice backup to Maxi. Um, maybe even if it plays alongside him in certain matchups. I really like Rob Dillingham. I was I was big on him even before he came to Kentucky, even before he committed. I was like, I like Rob Dillingham's game. I think he's a better playmaker than some people think. Obviously, he's not a good defender, and that's going to hold him back. But I think I feel like his ceiling can be like a Walmart Trey Young. I think he can get there. Um, it's going to take a it's going to take a, a while, maybe because he's he's really skinny right now. But I think I believe in him to bulk up. Weight is one of the least important uh, attributes when it comes to drafting. It's one of the last things you should really care about. The only thing weight should affect is like year one production, maybe. Uh, but weight is very easily is very very easily fixed. Um, like skinny, like being scrawny or whatever, is very easily fixed once you get to the NBA and you have NBA level dietitians and trainers. They'll get you right. They'll get you right on the weight. Um, so I think Dillingham. I think Dillingham will be a really good player. I believe in Rob Dillingham, and uh, yeah, him here with the Sixers wouldn't be bad. Or if they shop the pick, I could see someone trading up for Dillingham because he is he is falling down the board. I don't know exactly where he would end up realistically. I know there's like some shenanigans with like possibly clutch. Uh, his agency interfering with like where he want trying to direct him to a good place to go. I'm not going to get involved in all that too much, but um, all I know is if he is trying to steer where he wants to go, I don't think the Sixers would be a bad choice. I th I, I do think he'd get minutes here. Um, maybe. I don't know. I'm expecting this pick to be traded anyway. So take, take that with what you want. Okay. Lakers at 17. I debated for a while on uh, a few of these players. I think they they have a lot of options here. I I actually don't think the Lakers are going to trade this. I think they're going to keep this. However, the Lakers are so weird. They're so weird. Last year they took Jalen Hood Shafino. Why did you take Jalen Hood Shafino? Like, I, I don't know. I I don't think. I don't know how much they value drafting for need or for fit or for best player available but they took Jalen Hood Shafino over other players that could have helped right away such as Jaime Hawkes and all of them so and, and even Cam Whitmore I think they took him over Cam Whitmore so it's like I don't know I don't know what this Lakers team is thinking I don't I don't know how they make the draft decisions at all I'm just gonna go ahead and give him Johnny Furvey because I think he would be able to help them right away and I think he's got like some decent upside to him uh, it's nothing crazy, but like I think he, I, I, there's a chance he is a starter. Maybe um, at the very least, he provides floor spacing, and that'll help LeBron James and all them. I could also maybe see that they no, I don't know, because Topic is falling, but last year Cam Whitmore was falling, and they didn't take Cam Whitmore, so it's like I don't know. I have no clue what the Lakers are gonna do here. I'm just gonna give him Johnny Furphy and just be like, look, he fits with your team, like play him. Uh, Lakers have a lot of players that are like good but not good enough i think um 
and maybe Ruby adds on to that list. Um, but like, screw it, why not? Just like, he'll give you some space and he'll help LeBron James out a little bit, I guess. Um, so yeah. Okay. Magic at 18. I'm going to have them take Jacoby Walter. The Magic desperately needs some floor spacing. I think him or Tyler Smith would both work, but uh, they have a lot of, they, their forward positions are pretty locked down right now. So I think it'd be nice to have Jacoby Walter, who's actually a good shooter, fall here to them for him to be able to actually provide spacing to this team. I think it would help them a lot. Uh, so yeah. Raptors. Okay. So I know I picked up which for the Raptors in the last one. I think I'm going to pick it again. I, I just... I don't know why. I have a feeling that if Topich followed this far, I think the Raptors would take the swing. Um, and, you know, it for me, Topich was always, I never rated Topich as like top five or top 10 pick to me personally. I just, I don't buy his ability to reach his ceiling. Not that he doesn't have a high ceiling. He has a high ceiling. I don't know if he'll reach it because of extenuating circumstances and also because let's think about this right if he's going to a team that does not value his development he has to go to the right situation if he's not in the right situation he is not going to work out at least for the team that drafts him um he needs to go to a team that is willing to put the ball in his hands and to commit to him having the ball in his hands because the best part of his game is passing the ball uh he can also drive but I think I don't fully buy the driving ability. I think a lot of it is really reliant on screens. And I don't know how many screens he's going to get called for him as the main primary ball handler in the NBA. The threshold you have to, the threshold of talent you have to have to be the primary ball handler in the NBA is very high. I don't know if Topic reaches that right now. So now the swing skill is his shot. Can he get the shot? He has a good free throw percentage. His mechanics don't look awful, but he's pretty inconsistent on his on his shooting. He doesn't really have an in-between game. And I think the biggest stickler for me is that he's not a great defender. And it's like, I can, there's a lot of prospects where I can look past the, I can look past uh, not being off, like being offensively raw. I can look past it. Because usually they play defense. Topic is not a great defender. On top of that, the knee injuries. He's probably not even going to play his first year. Or he might play. He might miss like half of it, you know? So it's like this. If he isn't going to... Um, if he's not going to defend for you, and he's not going to be your primary ball handler right away, what is he doing for you to get on the floor as a coach? Like, why would a coach put him on the floor unless it was a team willing to develop him and willing to put the ball in his hands? And I think the Raptors could be one of those teams. Now, he'd be coming off the bench, but I think that's better than a lot of other situations. And I think also this could be a trade-up spot. The Raptors could trade down if someone wants to trade up to here and they could take Topic. Um some other options for the Raptors here could be someone like Tyler Smith, someone who can provide some spacing for them uh, and, and is big. Um, my, yeah, that's just my thing with Topic is the guard turnover in the league is so high. The threshold for being a good ball handler is so high. I just wonder if he'll reach his ceiling. I just, I don't know if he'll reach his ceiling. That's just, that's just it. His ceiling is high. Don't get me wrong. I don't, know if you will reach it is my problem so there's my topic rant finally out of the way um but i'm rooting for topic either way i never want to see any of these players fail if i ever talk down or talk about the negatives of a player i don't want to see them fail i'd rather be wrong and see this player succeed because that's not only better for them it's better for the league you know um so i don't want to see topic fail i hope he succeeds i just i struggle to see um exactly where he ex like exactly if uh, i struggle to see him hitting a ceiling essentially it is what i'm trying to say but yeah but i think look i think at 19 this guy was projected top five okay but no matter what i say nba scouts had this guy projected top five so like at the end of the day 
and getting him at 19 is a pretty good deal. So take that for what you will. There's a chance he even falls lower than this, but there's a chance he goes way before this. He could go to 10, he could go at 15. There's a few different spots he could go. Someone else could trade up for him. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think this is a good landing spot um, for Topic. It's well, it's a good landing spot, and it's definitely not one of the one of the worst ones he could go to. He could go to a better team that just stuffs him on the bench and never plays him, and then his career is just takes a tumble. But I think this is one of the better spots for him. I think uh, if you, especially once you get this low. Okay, Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm gonna have them taking. Um, Terrence Shannon Jr., whose range is all over the place. But look, I think the Cavs need more scoring, especially off their bench. They need they just they could use some spacing. They could use some scoring. Terrence Shannon Jr. provides that. He's an older player. He's gonna be ready, he's gonna be, hopefully be ready to go uh, and just ready to contribute right away. And um yeah, I just think he'd be a, he'd be a solid fit here. I could also see Tyler Smith here. Um, some people would say maybe they take a center. I don't really know because apparently they're trading Jared Allen, but if they're trading Jared Allen, I assume it would be to move Mobley to center. And then it's like, well, why have they taken another center? I don't know. The, the Cavs are another spot where it's like, I don't really know what, the, what they'll do here, but I think Terrence Shannon Jr. is a good bet. And the Cavs want to win now. I think he's a good like six man and just comes off the bench, drops, drops a bunch of points for you, keeps you in the game, keeps you while your starters are out. Okay, so now we have the New Orleans Pelicans. And I think I made this pick yesterday as well. I, but I, I'm really coming around to it. I, I think look, I think Tyler Smith could go here. Um, I think maybe Edie could go here, even though I wouldn't do that. Um, Missy uh, maybe could go. I don't think so. Deron Holmes is a real possibility to go here. Collier is even maybe a possibility to go here. But I think, I really think, Low key, a good fit for this team will be Kyle Filipowski. Hear me out. I think he fits well with Zion. I think he provides spacing for Zion. Uh, almost, he's like almost like a Jonas Valanciunas esque player. He provides spacing. He's not amazing on defense, but like he's good enough. Where like if if they want to keep Zion and keep building around him, the biggest struggle with building around Zion is who do you have as your center? And I think Kyle Filipowski could fill this spot for them um, and provide some spacing. He'll be on a rookie deal. I think this is a good fit, in my opinion. There's a couple other places they could go, but I don't mind this pick at all. I think Filipowski fits well with Zion Williamson. Okay, the Suns at 22. I have them taking Zach Eady here. Look, uh, Yusuf Nurkic is cool, but he's not the answer at center. Um, and I'm not saying ED is the answer at center either. But uh, who, you know, what's really their depth at center after Nurkic, right? Is a bull bull, but they kind of been playing bull at the four as well. I think ED would be a, a good get here. I think I could also see them going like Tyler Kolick or going for like a point guard. Um, really, really what they need is they need depth. They need depth, especially at the center and point guard positions. And I think they could find it. I think they could find a point guard in the undrafted market at some point, or at least in free agency, they could pick up a point guard, but it's harder to find a center. Like I said, the guard turnover rate is much higher. So I think, look, if you have a chance to take Edie here or Khalil Ware or Misi or Daron Holmes, I think, I think they'll take that chance, even though this pick also might be traded. And we know James Jones doesn't really like um, draft picks very much, but I think Edie would be a good pick here. I think this is one of the one of the places that he'd fit well, um, well enough at least, because he'd be coming off the bench. There wouldn't be pressure on him to like start right away and like do all this. Uh, so I think this is a good landing spot for both teams or both parties. Okay, we have the Bucks, and for the Bucks, I have them taking Tyler Smith because why not take Tyler Smith? Uh, he's a guy who will give him some spacing. The Bucks have like a lot of guards and also a few people that they've drafted that are guards. So I would say Jalen Tyson would fit here, but like at the same time, they've, like I said, they just have so many guards on their team sometimes. It's like, where are they, who are they going to give these minutes to? I think Tyler Smith has a chance to come in kind of right away. I could also see, I could also see them going center here. I could see them going to Ron Holmes. I could see them going Missy. 
I think I think both would fit. Um, I don't really know what to do with the Bucks here either. We're gonna kind of have to wait and see what they do with Brooke Lopez if that's like real, like if like the the smoke there is real. If I think they want to possibly move away from him, um, the Bucks are in a, in a strange spot, and I think Tyler Smith at the very least will provide them floor spacing, and it'll be a a solid young prospect that can actually develop even further than that um, in the future. And maybe even be, one day be like a Chris Middleton replacement. I don't, I don't know if we'll get to that level, but like, you know, that's the along the lines of if Chris Middleton goes down, this guy could slot in and, and help out. So, yeah. Okay. 24, we have the Knicks. And we know, we know the Knicks deal just went down. I think the Knicks deal is a win-win deal. I know people are saying it's a lot of picks to give up. It does seem like a lot of picks to give up on paper. However, most of these picks are going to be in the 20s to 30s, and not every draft is going to be stacked. And they still have their draft pick every other year. This is not the this is not the Nets to the Celtics trade from years back, right? This is not that bad. I think they paid a decent price. They had all these first round picks. You might as well use them. So they used them. And they were able to keep these two picks. So these, so it will be very interesting to see what they do with these two picks. It's kind of been reported that they're doing everything they can to keep OG and Anobi right now, and that Hartenstein might be a casualty because they can't afford him cap wise if they sign OG. So going that way, also another report came out that they wanted more wings, uh, so they could specifically stop the Celtics. So all this leads me to believe they're looking for two types of players. They're looking for a wing, and they're looking for a big man, um, or at least big man adjacent. And so what I think I'm going to do here, and I could see this going a few different ways. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give them Ryan Dunn, who is a huge upside swing. He's an amazing defensive prospect, amazing defensive prospect. He's a really, really good on, on defense. Offense is just, eh, it is just not great um i watched some uva games as well along the way and he, he was someone who stood out on defense like damn this guy like this guy's clamping up but like when he got the ball it just like it was just like he, we didn't know what was happening <laughs> like he can't really shoot he doesn't really create for himself that like that um he's very raw on offense however the defense i think could help right away if they wanted to bring him off the bench and here's the thing if he develops an offense immediately becomes a really good player if he develop, develops like any form of offense you know so i think this is a good swing for the knicks to take he's an amazing defensive prospect i think um i think they'll love him in new york um uh so yeah if, if they can just develop him develop his offense just a little bit if he could i got if he just had a three-point shot oh my god he'd be incredible he'd be incredible to have on this team and he gives them wing depth which is something that they need and i think for their second pick um, going back to back, I was picking between a couple different players here and mostly between Misi and Holmes. And I think I'm going to go Holmes. I think I'm going to go Holmes here. He's, he's a, he's a pass dribble shoot kind of big. He's not really good at being that the typical big things, like he's not an amazing rebounder and he's not uh, a great def like paint defender or anything. But at the same time, I mean, I think Dayton, I'm pretty sure Dayton played a five out offense. So like his rebounds are still decent for that. Um, and Deron Holmes is somebody whose range is all over the place as well. Like he could go as high as 12 to the Thunder and he could go as low as like, I don't think he drops below 30 to the Celtics. I think the Celtics pick him up um, and try and turn him into like an Al Horford light. Um, but this is a guy who can pass dribble shoot. Um, he's six foot eight in shoes, more like six foot nine, 10 uh, in, or sorry, six foot eight without shoes. He's more six foot nine and a half ish in shoes. And I think, like, at the very least, could be, like, a decent backup to Julius Randle. Um, I think at the very least could could do that. I wouldn't be surprised if they went Missy, though. Um, but at the same time, they could maybe wait for the second round and try and pick up Adem Bona. I think that would be also be a really good pick, uh, pick up for them there. Um, if they, do they have their second round pick? I think I think they do. I think they have a second round pick as well. I don't think, it tra I don't think they traded it. So yeah, I think Deron Holmes is a great pick here. Okay, now we're at Washington. And I think Isaiah Collier has fallen far enough. I'm not even super high on Collier. 
Um, and I think he's fallen a little bit too far. Um, at the end of the day, this guy was on a really bad team. He kind of got, um, but my, my biggest issues with Collier are um, the, the playmaking isn't exactly where you'd want it to be. Uh, part of that is also that he was on a bad team though. Uh, but also the turnovers are really not good. The turnovers have been really sloppy. Um, and I want him to improve his decision-making there a, as a whole, but I think he's a good upside swing. I think this is a, this is a nice swing to take. I think if Collier wasn't taken here, I think um, the Wizards would either be looking at Bobby Clinton or they'd be looking at um, maybe even Misi. Um, or maybe even someone like where do you go? Uh, even someone like Paco Mdadie. I think he could also go there. Um, but yeah, I, I think Collier is a good pick for the Wizards. They need a guard, anyways. Might as well go get, get, grab a point guard and see what he, see what he's made of. Um, so yeah, if he can just shore up the defense a little bit, and if he can, um, if he can improve on those turnovers, I think he'll be a good player for us. Okay. 27, we have the Timberwolves. I'm going to have them taking um, taking basically, not like the replacement to Mike Conley, but someone who would help them out a lot. I think uh, this is a really good fit for for Kolek right here is is Minnesota. And uh, Kolek's just kind of one of those guys that, you know, this is, um, this is just one of those spots for Kolek that make a lot of sense. And the the Wolves could use some point guard depth. Uh, this guy can shoot it like like he can he'll help them out. Uh, he's he's a pretty solid point guard. I think especially if he takes after Mike Conley and Mike Conley um, coaches him up and like is his vet. I think he could learn a lot from Mike Conley. And I don't know if he'll be a starter one day, but like there's a chance he could be. Um, but I think at the very least he'll be a solid backup. And um, I think that's I think that's something that they could use, especially if Conley goes down. He's getting old, you know. If he goes down with injury. Um, heaven forbid, obviously, but if he does go down, Tyler Cloak will be ready to step right in for him. Okay. Denver Nuggets. Uh, I'm going to have them take Misi here to stop his little fall. Um, look, I, I think I think Wes on the previous podcast said it best. I think the non-Jokic minutes really suck right now. And while I wouldn't be opposed for them going for Kaishan George here or going Jalen Tyson, or going Bobby Clintman, or Paco Dadier, or even Baylor Shireman. I wouldn't be opposed to the Nuggets taking any of those players. I think this is a really good chance to get a backup center behind Jokic that is just a good defensive center who will just hold the line at the very least uh, and allow the starters to come back in, like not down, you know? Like give Jokic a little bit of a break. I think Macy would be really good here. He's He's kind of raw offensively, but he's kind of in the Clint Capella esque. Um, he's a rim protecting big, you know, that kind of a guy. So, yeah. Okay, twenty nine for the Jazz. I have them taking Pacom Dadier. I think he's got, or I think he's got a sneaky high ceiling as well. Um, all these French guys are coming out of nowhere, man. But I, I think he has, um, he has a really high ceiling. And if he, if look at the shooting transfers and everything like that, I think he's going to be a really good uh, pick for the Jazz. They're going to go for upside swings at this point. You might as well take this guy. Um, just go for it. Uh, there's also a chance that maybe they trade up from this pick to go get someone like Topic or like, you know, someone else that they like. So maybe they don't pick here exactly. Maybe they're uh, above a little bit. But I think Dadier is, I think he deserves to go in the first round. I think he's a good player. Okay, and final pick. Um, they don't want to make this pick. I don't like the Celtics, but hear me out. They could go a few. They could go a number of different directions here. I think. I think, for me, I would be picking between Bobby Clintman and uh, Baylor Shireman here, and I'm going to go Baylor Shireman because I think Baylor Shireman is a little underrated right now. I believe in his offense and his defense. I think his defense is a little bit better than people are, are saying. Like, he's not a complete non-defender, right? Uh, and I think he's a little bit better on offense than people are saying as well. He's not just a shooter. I think he can do a little bit of, he can do a little bit more. This is a guy who would help them right away in their playoff race, uh, in their playoff hunt, or, you know, trying to repeat. I think he would help right away bring um, immediate scoring off the bench, and he'd be a really good fit, and it would make me sad 
it would make me sad to see him go here because I really like Barry Shryman. I really don't like the Celtics, and that's why it's going to happen. Let's just be so real. Like, that's why it will happen to make me mad. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's also a chance Celtics trade out of this. I don't know, but maybe they don't because it's a rookie deal and they're they're paying a lot of guys right now. They're going to be paying some more guys later on, so might as well. Um, you know, they could also take a center. They could they could go for a Dembona here. Like I I could see that as well. Um, yeah, I think Adembona, Baylor Sharman, or Bobby Clinton all could go here. And I, I just picked Baylor Sharman because I want to give him a shout out right there. Okay. So that is the entire first round. I would love to go into the second round, but I think this video would be insanely long if I did. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to list, list off some second rounders that I really like, um, that I think could make some noise in the league one day. Uh, so first of all is Bobby Clinton. I think he could be good. Um, and then Cam Christie. So keep an eye out for him. Jalen Tyson, I mentioned him a couple times. Juan Nunez, uh, Adam Bona, I talked about him a little bit. Uh, Nikola Jurisic, Dur I think could be really good. Uh, Jamal Sheed is is isn't he's small, but like I want to believe in him. He's just he's a really good defender, and I don't know. I I think he's pretty good. I hope he goes in the second round to a team that can give him maybe some minutes. We'll see. We'll see where he goes there. I think here. I still like Harrison Ingram. I still, I'm still kind of a Harrison Ingram believer. And speaking of still being a believer, I'm still kind of a Justin Edwards believer as well. I think Justin Edwards, look, he was projected top five before the season started. And obviously he didn't have the best season. And I watched almost every Kentucky game. There were a lot of games where he just disappeared. And I get that. But at the same time, like there's like flashes where you see him and you're like, wow, wait, no, this guy's an NBA player. It's like flashes of that. And I think, I think it'd be decent I think it'll be a good swing for a team to take. Um, you know, I think I think the biggest thing he needs is just a boost of confidence and just the green light to just let it fly because he's a good shooter. He just like hesitated a lot to shoot the ball. I think uh, you give him the green light and, and let it fly. Something I forgot to mention about Rob Dillingham as well. He, um, this is, sorry, the Kentucky thing got me thinking about this. So like what also I love about Rob Dillingham is that like he changed his game to fit into Kentucky as well. Like coach John Calipari, like told him, like, we need you to be a, a playmaker for this team as well. And he went out there and he improved his playmaking. Like, I think, I think that, I think that's worth something. I think it's worth uh, saying something about Rob Dillingham and his character. I, I think he's, I think he's a good dude. And I think he's a hard worker. Um, So yeah. So Justin Edwards, I think a second round sleeper. Uh, Antonio Reeves, I guess on that same wave, like while we're talking about Kentucky, bring up everybody, right? Antonio Reeves, I think is also, uh, he's, he could be a really solid bench scorer for somebody. Um, and then Tristan Newton as well, uh, the the UConn point guard. So that's the second rounders that you should keep an eye on. Uh, if you're going to watch the second day, kind of keep those names uh, around in your head. Um at least if the board works out exactly the way I did. Uh, if it doesn't, then keep some of these guys that are on the first round board on your mind for the second round. But I also want to touch on Bronny James a little bit. Yes, he was not taken the first round. I highly doubt he's taken in the first round on actual draft night. It seems like he's geared for the second round, probably to the Lakers at 55. Uh, do I believe Bronny James can become an NBA player? Yes, I, I do believe he can. Um, I think he's. I think if he takes kind of that Lonzo Ball path, where he focuses on defense, which is which he's really good at, focuses on defense, focuses on playmaking, and focuses on shooting, right? Because I think I think there's a, I think there's a very clear path there for Bronny James. He's just gonna have to get into the right situation. He's gonna have to grind a little bit. I think he can. I think he can be a good player. I don't think he'll be a star, but I think he'll be a really solid role player one day. Um, at least I hope so. I hope he will be. Uh, I'm rooting for Bronny. Um, and shout out to, man, shout out to all the clickbaiters um, that put Bronny really high for no reason, just for him to like get his name like shat on. Just like awful, disgusting work, by the way, for the, from certain, I'm not going to call them. Oh yeah, I'll call them out. Uh, at ESPN, Jonathan Giovanni. Why did you put Bronny James in the top ten? He put him in there for clickbait. We know he did. You're just inviting hate onto him, and it's not fair. This guy was never ranked that highly. Okay, I I I'm frankly like uh, that like that makes me mad. 
that like they put him that high for clickbait and they have the entire internet just shit on this guy. And then they start slowly putting him down and down and down on their board. And it's like, you don't even notice it was there now. But it's like a few months ago, he was number 10 on your board, man. Why is he dropped down to 55? You know? It's just, uh, that that really rubs me the wrong way when when, when um, certain draft members do that. So do not fall for for, uh, for a lot of the clickbait early on. Um, when it comes down to the wires, when people start getting more accurate. Also want to shout out an undrafted guy. I don't think he's going to be drafted, but... Um, I love this guy, Raekwon Battle. Love Raekwon Battle. Loved watching him in college. I hope he finds a team uh, in the NBA and get hops on a roster somehow on like a two-way. Um, shout out Raekwon Battle. I love his story. I, uh, I love his game. He's a good shooter. Um, he's good at he's good at pulling up, um, shooting. I mean, like he's. I think he's a decent defender. He's got uh, he's got pretty good athleticism. I I'm rooting for this guy, Raekwon Battle. Shout out to you, buddy. Uh, I, I hope you make it. Um, I think, unfortunately, the West Virginia team being as bad as it did didn't help him at all, like get recognition at all for the draft. Um, but I think if that team was good, I think he'd definitely be on the in somebody's second round board, I think. Uh, so shout out Raekwon Battle. He's, under, he's probably going to go undrafted. I did The last thing I saw of him was he was on the – like he posted a story of him at the Pistons facility, so – Hey Pistons, y'all need y'all need some help. You can pick up my guy Raekwon Battle. Um, but yeah, that that is that is my mock draft. Uh, like I said, this is really hard to put together. There's a lot of divisive picks here, but I hope you guys enjoyed. I think if you, I hope you've listened this far, you've subscribed and liked. That would be awesome. Um, thank you all for for watching, and I really appreciate the support. Can't wait to watch draft night. Um, so yeah. Um, Oh, I never fully expanded upon my Knicks, Knicks idea, did I? Okay, well, okay, so the Knicks are now vaulting themselves into contention, right? They're giving up a bunch of picks that they had. So what? Those picks weren't going to, they're not going to be that that high, especially if they keep Brunson and Mikhail Bridges together. I think that's a perennial, like, top five team in the East. Like, just those two alone, uh, and, like, role players. And I really like I really like the team the Knicks have built here. If they keep OG, if they draft those guys that I said they were going to draft, I really like the Knicks, especially down the, down the line. I think in a year or two, I really think we'll be seeing the Knicks as like legitimate contenders, and um, hopefully able to match up against the Celtics. But we'll see how that goes. The Celtics are just so stacked right now, um, and the Nets win win for them. They got four first round picks. They're not that high, but they're still first round picks. You know. So shout out to the shout out to both teams. It's a win-win for both sides. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching once again. I'm excited for draft night. This will probably go up at a weird time, uh, but screw it. Why not? Um, yeah, have yourselves a great day. Take care. This has been Speak Truth Sports. This has been Bert. I'm signing off. Goodbye.